continuing on weather, uh, we're going to talk about icing for a couple minutes. Okay, uh, for icing to form, we need three things. We have to have freezing temperatures. Okay, if it's not freezing, ice can't form. It's just against the rules of nature. Okay, so we need the freezing temperatures. However, if I'm on the ground, I don't know uh, what's above me. Okay, so that's the first thing I need. Um, pay attention to your outside air temperature if you have one on the airplane, most airplanes do. So freezing temperature, I have to have visible moisture. Okay, if I'm looking outside and there, you know, the weather and it's clear and the weatherman says, oh, we're at 50% humidity, whatever. If I can't see a cloud, fog, some kind of condensation, I don't have visible moisture, ice can't form. Now, that being said, if that moisture condenses, now I do have visible moisture. If I fly through a cloud, okay, your VFR pilots, rule number one, stay out of the clouds. Okay, <laughs> if you're an instrument pilot, that's a whole different story but stay out of the clouds. Uh, visible moisture. And then the third thing, we need a collecting surface. What does that mean? That is my airplane. Okay, so you're like, yeah, but we asked that question, but what, why is she saying it that way? Okay, uh, a couple summers ago, I had some water bottles in my freezer because they're kind of nice to have in the summertime on a hot summer day. So I opened up my freezer and one of my bottles was still liquid. And I'm kind of like, what? My freezer quit. I'm kind of going insane here for a few seconds. And then I noticed the other two bottles are frozen and I'm like, I'm just confused. So I picked that bottle up and as soon as I moved it, it took about five or six seconds. She always had video, but it took about five or six seconds and it went from liquid to frozen solid. It didn't identify the bottle as a collecting surface because it was still. Okay, so we need a collecting surface. Okay, where this really happens is we've had a cold front move through. Okay, the cold front move through. This is warm air up here. Okay, so that warm air gets pushed up. And then, and as it gets pushed up, it starts to turn into clouds. Okay. Uh, because it reaches the dew point as it gets colder and as it starts to they turn into rain clouds and it starts to rain okay so I'm down here and we're just going to say it was 26 degrees Fahrenheit just a few degrees below freezing but I'm down below this low layer of clouds and there's nothing going on I'm fat dumb and happy Okay, key word here is dumb, okay? <laughs> so when this cloud starts to rain, I've got my visible moisture, I've got my freezing temperature. Guess what? I've just introduced that collecting surface into this rain. And in your car, you would call it sleet. Been there, done that, got the gray hair. Okay, uh, it will accumulate on your airplane really, really fast. Okay, what does it do to my airplane? Ice on the windshield means I can't see forward. Ice on the wings means I'm a test pilot because I've added weight and I've distorted my airfoil. How much? I don't know, but I've added a significant amount of weight to my airplane and I've uh, changed the airfoil a certain amount. Okay, so this is what gets us the VFR pilots down here. We're in, we think we're in clear air. But when you encounter that rain and it's going through that freezing temperature, it becomes super cooled and it will collect on my airplane faster than you can say, what's up doc? <laughs> and you will be extremely, uh, you know, yeah, it's not gonna be a pleasant experience. So these are the three things I have to have. Okay, how do I prevent this? Okay, uh, if you have an iPad, or you know someone who does, you go under imagery and then you go under icing and it's gonna have all this cool stuff. The first thing it's gonna give you is the freezing level. Okay, 
So if it's not freezing, you can't get ice. So be understanding that when I had that cold front a while ago, once I'm out here, I'm safe. Okay, so I'm looking at that freezing level. And then I can, uh, then there's a lot of charts on uh, potential and then severity. Okay, private pilot, your, you know, your, your severity, temper, you know, 10% probability, you're done, okay? Uh, you can tolerate zero freezing. Or ice. Yeah, yeah, zero ice on your airplane. That's your tolerance level, okay? Will you survive it? Yes, maybe. But understanding, yes, a lot of it have survived it, okay? Uh, my granddaughter, she was flying with a student. Her first indication, and again, they weren't paying attention to the, temp uh, to the dew point, but her first indication is the raindrops stopped running up the windshield. They sat still, and she's like, rut row. And so they turned around and went back to the airport, five minutes. They were in this, they were in this for, it was like, just like misty stuff. It wasn't raining hard, so she it was, a, it was a slow accumulation. So five minutes, they landed. They started trying to de-ice the airplane manually. Uh, two hours later, they got the airplane cleaned off. So, two, you know, yeah, so a lot of ice, even though it wasn't coming down, um, but let's say, so it, it, it can accumulate far quicker than you think. Okay, sometimes they'll tell us, how do I get out of ice? Well, the easiest thing is just to avoid it in the start in the first place. Pay attention. So stay out of it to start with. It, sometimes they'll tell you to climb. The idea is you're going to climb up into warmer air or you're going to climb up to where it's already frozen. And if it's already frozen, it won't, it's less likely to stick to your airplane. Okay. But in a 172 that's already accumulated a load of ice, it may not want to climb. Okay. So uh, now you're making, now you may be having to make a hard decision. Do I want, can I make it back to an airport? Maybe. And then, you know, and again, if I'm, I've got a cloud here and it's pouring ice down on me and I'm flying through there, if I make a 180 degree turn, now I've, I've got some definite loads on my airplane and change that load factor with an unknown element of what my wing is doing. So it might be smarter to punch through. I don't know on their specific, you know, because I don't know what your cloud's going to be like. Okay, so understanding, trying to do a 180 degree turn to get out of that ice might be a bad plan. Okay, uh, if I'm flying through it, that might be the safest. But again, I don't know how far it goes. So uh, prevention is, and again, if I'm looking at my next rad radar to tell me how big that cloud is, that information might be 15 minutes old and that cloud may, be, may have moved or be substantially larger than what it was when we started this nonsense. Okay, so you can't trust your next rad to keep you safe. Uh, any other questions on icing? Uh, we, well, we can talk about the, the three kinds of icing. Got a minute. Um, we have uh, clear, rind, and mixed. Okay, um, which one's the worst? Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, clear icing typically conforms to the shape of the wing, so we have less distortion, but it's heavy. So it's gonna distinctly add to the weight of the airplane very, very quickly. Okay, rhyme traps a lot of air, so it kinda looks like what you see on the old fashioned um, refrigerators or freezers that weren't frost free. So it looks a lot like frost, uh, but sometimes it's kind of really weird shaped and it will accumulate a lot of air inside there. So it's highly disruptive of your airfoil. Doesn't weigh as much because it has that trapped ice, but it's more of a distortion. And then mixed ice is when we have a combination of the two. Which one is worse? The one you're in. Okay. Mm. So there's not a good kind of ice unless you're sitting at the table drinking iced tea. Okay, <laughs> uh, but ice in an airplane. Now we do have some airplanes uh, 
You may have heard the term peaky. Flight into known icing. Okay. Conquest I fly is allowed to go into known icing. Okay. But I've got my wings have boots. My props have the icing. I've got engine inlets. I've got all kinds of fun things to way to get rid of my ice. Okay. One thing we didn't talk about, and we'll talk about this in length later, is my pitot tube or my static port. Okay, the ice is going to form first on small things that stick up. Okay, like my antennas, like my pitot tube. Okay, so if my pitot tube ices over, that maybe my, my airspeed starts to do weird things. Okay, so if my pitot tube ices over, some airplanes have pitot heat. Turn it on. Okay, doesn't mean you can keep on going. Trust me on that. Uh, but if you've got pedo heat and you're close to these temperatures, turn on the pedo heat. Okay. I will talk about on the on a later session on pedo and static ports and how those affect us. But your pedo and the static port, if it gets blocked, my altimeter is no longer functioning. So when you say your airspeed does funny things, are you talking about airspeed indicator? Yes, my airspeed indicator oh, okay. yeah. is going to... Uh, and, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about it, but my airspeed is measuring how the difference in the number of molecules going into the pitot versus what it has on the static. Right. Okay. And so if either one of these is blocked, it's going to cause that airspeed to do weird things. If my static port is blocked, it's just going to trap that air into my altimeter and my vertical speed, and they're not going to show a change because they're not going to sense a change. Kind of like so, you know. So you're like, uh, we'll talk about that when we talk about the pedostatic systems. But right now, understand icing is going to have some weird effects on my pedo tube just when I need my airspeed the most. Okay, and I want to increase my airspeed as much as I can because I don't know what my stall speed is when I'm carrying a load of ice with a distorted airflow. Okay, thank you. Okay, so yeah. alrighty. We'll take a break on icing. Okay. I'm going to run to the bathroom also.